you're thinking about going electric, but you keep on hearing things like eh, it costs a lot more money or the battery takes a lot of carbon dioxide or the electricity grid, if it's dirty, you're not really seeing a benefit. Maybe you're wondering if you're gonna save money driving an electric vehicle versus an ICE vehicle. Well, I have what would amount to a year's worth of Teslify data and I'm gonna share it all. Unfortunately, the car used more power than I thought it would, but the results are still shocking. I'm Ryan from Rocky Mountain Tesla, and I'm sharing the data because it's electrifying. It's electrifying transport, and it's making it easier for you to make a decision about going electric, or it's helping you justify the decision you made. And please don't forget to subscribe. You probably drove an ICE vehicle before you went electric, or you're probably driving one now if you still haven't made that jump. And you're probably wondering exactly how much difference it is in cost to drive. And you're probably also wondering if there is a great environmental benefit, especially around CO2 is what I'm talking about, GHG emissions. Before we go any further, I am sharing a very detailed Google Sheet that talks about it all. It's a deep dive. I go into all the math regarding costs, cost of charging, how much charging we did, how much driving we did, and also a deep dive into GHG emissions and CO2 produced from the car, from the electricity grid, from a cleaner grid, from the Alberta grid, and I'm sharing it all. We drove just over 17,000 kilometers in just over a year. We charged over 3,500 kilowatt hours in that time. It turned out to be 207 watt hours per kilometer efficiency. So something below 70%. And when I thought about it, I thought this isn't gonna be that good. We're using a lot more electricity than I thought. So what, gas isn't that bad? That you're thinking maybe uh, it's just fine to drive a, an economical vehicle. Well, you'd probably be wrong. I went through the numbers and it is shocking how efficient this car is. So looking at supercharging we did on trips and charging that we did around town, visiting family, etc. We spent about $438, or we would if we paid eight cents per kilowatt hour as you do in Alberta. Looking at some very simple math and comparing to what we would have spent in our previous vehicle, a Mercedes-Benz E250, we got about 400 kilometers or less from each tank. The difference was almost $2,000 for driving this vehicle versus what we would have spent driving an internal combustion engine vehicle that was fairly efficient. I did the same math on BC driving and the difference in fuel costs, the difference in electricity, and it would have even been a bigger savings in BC. It was over $2,100 in BC. The total cost of us charging wasn't too bad at all, to be honest, but I don't really have super accurate numbers. Maybe I'll do a video one day and show how cheap you can actually drive this car if you don't have charging at home. Now I have to admit I probably spend a little more money on maintaining this car, washing it. We also put on a PPF and a ceramic coat to protect the car, knowing that we're gonna drive it a long time because it is a slightly more expensive car than what we drove before. And for that reason, we do spend a little more on maintenance that way. Tires, things like that, kind of a wash. I haven't really noticed a difference in, in tire wear. Maybe the biggest difference there is that I'm taking care of the car and my wife doesn't have to nag me to do it. Okay, so now you're thinking, well, if I drive the car for six to eight years and save a couple thousand dollars a year in fuel costs, yeah, that might be worth it. But isn't the reason you're really doing it because it's better for the environment? Well, if I use more electricity than I thought, and I live in Alberta that produces more carbon dioxide from the electricity grid, is it really a benefit? Okay, so this is where it gets complicated. 
This battery is about 50 kilowatt hours. And in producing the battery, it takes about 61 kilograms of CO2. That's how much pollution is spewed into the atmosphere to create this battery per kilowatt hour. So that's 3,050 kilograms of CO2 produced when producing this battery. Well, that means this car has to be so much more efficient to make up for that. And how soon does that happen? I read an article talking about how one company was saying that it would take 50,000 miles to make up for that difference. Well, I have all the data, all the charging data, all the driving data, and the numbers are a lot different than that. They are a lot less than that. Even here in Alberta, where we produce 0.79 kilograms of CO2 is pr produced for every kilowatt hour of electricity that is produced on the Alberta grid. That means in a course of about 17,000 kilometers that we drove the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus, we produced something around 2,800 kilograms of CO2. How much CO2 is produced when you drive a gas vehicle? Well, I calculated it would be over 4,830 kilograms of CO2 produced with our previous car based on the amount we drove. So we actually were better than the other car by 2,000 kilograms. This would make up for the battery within about a year and a half or just under 26,000 kilometers. Well, what would it be in BC? It turns out it would be close to 11,000 kilometers of driving or under eight months. Even if electricity was produced from natural gas entirely, you would still have a greater benefit and in this car at least, you would make up for the battery production, the CO2 from battery production within a year. The numbers are beneficial going electric. Now, of course, if you drive a more efficient gas vehicle, you might have some different numbers. Take the spreadsheet that I'm sharing in the link below play with it, maybe you'll come up with a slightly different answer. Now of course if you choose a Tesla Model 3 long range or a Model Y or a Model S or a Model X, that battery would take more carbon dioxide in order to produce it. So your numbers will vary. More than likely, if you look closely at the numbers, you will find that it is of greater benefit to go electric, especially over time as the grid is getting cleaner. The other thing is you will just love to drive this car. And if you want to learn more about that perspective, take a look at the, this video over there that talks about driving this car in the first year. And also if you want to learn more about driving in different weather conditions, especially here in Canada, take a look down below at this playlist. And please don't forget to subscribe. Almost forgot this guy. He's been waiting for me. Time to go home.